Well, let's take a look at a few uh, unit conversions on temperature. So temperature is really just a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more, you can dive into also exploring what thermal energy is because temperature does tie into that. So I'll put up a link up above there for you. And here, what I want to be able to do is I want to take the formulas okay, between the actual unit conversions for temperature. So there's really just three unit conversions that are very common. So Celsius, which is based on the boiling point and freezing point in, in water. Uh, Fahrenheit, which is also based on the boiling point and freezing point, but it is with regards to uh, saturated salt water. And then Kelvin is with regards to actually the um, total thermal energy that you would have within a particle. And typically, you know, the less that you have, okay, so you'll, have, you'll notice that you are going to be hovering around zero Kelvin because there's really no movements of the particles at that particular temperature. And then as there's more and more movement as you're going along, you're going to get more and more, okay, values for your Kelvin scale. So the idea behind here is that you'll notice that the conversions aren't actually regular unit conversions that you would have, which are just basically just proportionality uh, items where you're just simply scaling one and the other and then canceling out your units. Within here, you actually do have a couple of formulas that you can go back and forth in between. So let's take a look and take these formulas in and start substituting items so that we can easily try to convert between one particular temperature uh, unit um, and another one. So let's begin with the first one. So here's the first example, so which is 41 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we wanna be able to convert this to degrees Celsius. So right away, you gotta kind of pick the correct um, formula for here. So I'm gonna pick, um, obviously, so this one, because we're going between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So that's gonna be this formula right there. I'm gonna just duplicate it, put it right underneath here. Okay, notice that it copied both there, that's all right. Okay, so let's substitute all of this in here. So this is gonna be five over nine. This is 41. So we're substituting it for there, minus 32. And then we can figure out exactly. Now 41 minus 32 is actually nine. So it's gonna be five over nine times nine. Well, the nines will cancel, and this is gonna be just five degrees Celsius. So that's how you can go ahead and use that. Now, the hardest part of actually the conversions is trying to remember what the formulas are. If you do it you know, often enough, then probably some of the formulas will stick, but don't worry if it doesn't stick. Typically, your teachers will probably let you, you know, put it on a cheat sheet or you can look it up at some point. So that would have been the first conversion. Let's take a look at another conversion. Okay, so in here, so now we're gonna go from Kelvin. Now we wanna turn it back into okay, Celsius. So this one is actually much easier okay, to be able to do that because notice, so here's the formula itself. If I substitute the 175, which is gonna be right in there, so what I'm gonna get is that my degrees Celsius is equivalent to 175 Kelvin minus 273. Well, so this one I, can, I mean, I guess I can do that in, in, uh, in my head as well because it's 175, so it's not too far away from 273, okay? But we can always pop out our calculator and it's gonna be negative 98 degrees Celsius, which is, you know, super, super cold, all right? Okay, so that is the conversion right there. And again, the same problem is, okay, you just have to kind of remember what the formula, this one is much easier to remember because you can remember that 273 item okay and then uh, you have your kelvin right in front there in the formula so let's keep on kind of cruising so here's from degrees celsius now we want to go back into kelvin so this is going to be now interesting because as you're going to be substituting it into the formula so here it is you um, notice that you're going to have to substitute it in either you know you can put it in here and then manipulate it for tk or you can rearrange this formula very quickly for TK. So this is gonna be TK, K is equal to, to TC, and then the sign will change, so it's gonna be plus 273. And now when you're substituting it in, okay, it's gonna make it a little bit easier for yourself, but you don't have to do that. You can just substitute it right into the formula, 
and then obtain what the number is. So now 23 you know, plus 273, so I guess it's 296, and this would have been in Kelvin. All right, so that would have been your answer right there. And you can also see okay, that you can manipulate this to obtain the formula that way. Now, the next one, notice this one is interesting because um, this one, I'm going to actually kind of take this out here and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to bring it down on the next page for us. So we want to go from degrees Fahrenheit to Kelvin. And now, so if you are looking at this, I'm going to try to, um, you know, steal, okay, the, this particular item. So let me try to grab these um, two, okay, so formulas right there. So let me copy this. Let's see, hopefully it copied both of them. Okay, so it did. So there we have it. Now, let me go back in here. Now, Fahrenheit to uh, Kelvin, I don't have this directly for me, right? Because I have between Celsius and Kelvin and between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So, you know, what I have to do actually in this process is I have to first convert this. So this, I can convert this certainly to degrees Celsius. And then I can take the degrees Celsius and then I can convert this back to Kelvin, right? So I would have to use two formulas for this. Okay, in order to do that. Or I would have to isolate, okay, and then substitute it back into the equation. So notice what I can do here is the following. Because of the fact that TC equals this and TC equals that, so I can equate the two. So what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get TK minus 273, so that's this right here, and it is equal to TC, which equals to five over nine T, all right, so that's in Fahrenheit minus 32. And now I have a formula right there between Kelvin and Fahrenheit, and I can substitute as needed. So within here, so it's gonna be five over nine, this is 85 minus 32. So I have that, and then TK, okay, and this 273 that I have there, so I can bring this over on the other side. And what I'm going to get, okay, so as I do that, so notice this is gonna become now positive, so 273 in this way. And now all I have is basically just an order of operations okay, in here to be able to figure this out. So let's go ahead and do that. So brackets okay, will be good first. So that's that. So there is that factor, so 53. And then this 53, we can multiply by 5 over 9. So we can take that. I'll put it as a fraction, so 5 over 9. You can put it in your calculator as you like. So there you have it. So it's going to be 29.44, etc. And then this answer, we have to add 273 to it. So that's going to be approximately 302, right? 0.444, so it's probably bar. But I guess we started with 85, so let's keep it, okay, to two significant figures. So this would have been 300, but the way that it's written, we need to put it in scientific notation, sometimes this, in order to keep it in two sig figs, which would have been that. Sig figs, you can put up a link up above there if you have forgotten that. Now for physics, you should okay, have that within in there. Now your teachers may not ask you about sig figs, you may have never even heard of them, so you can round to whatever it is that your teacher wants you to. So that is the conversion that we would have into Kelvin. All right, so that keeps this one out, and now this now gives us two more. So we wanna go from this, which is degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. So let's try that copy this, bring it back down here, paste it right there. And I can also take a look at this one. So I'm going to duplicate this. Okay, bring it down just so that I can see these things again right there. Let's maybe remove these highlighters right there. And let's try it. So there we go. So that's 11 degrees Celsius. So let's substitute it in here. Okay or that, that would have given us Kelvin. Um, actually, this is asking us for Fahrenheit. So let's substitute it not into this equation, but into this equation. So now what I'm going to have is 11 is equal to, so five over nine. Now I'm just substituting it directly. I wanna be able to find out what that temperature in Fahrenheit would be. Now it's a matter of manipulation. I have to know how to do this. Okay, so within here, 
So you can bring this inside of the brackets, of course. So that's one way to be able to do that and you know solve for the unknown. Okay, or you can just get rid of this and multiply both sides by um, nine over five. So I'll do that. So nine over five. So that nine cancels, that five cancels. I have to do that to the opposite side as well. So there you have that. So now this is gonna be 99 over five is equal to you know TF minus 32. And you can bring this over to this side and which will give you exactly what you wanted. That's so gonna be plus 32. So let's do that all in one step, 99 over five. So that's that. And then that answer plus 32, which is gonna be 51.8. Okay, and again, you can round to whatever it is that they want you to. I'll just round it to two sig figs. Again, that would have been my answer right there. So there you have it. And that leaves just one more. And now this one is from Kelvin, going all the way back to Fahrenheit, all right? So you can do that. And so for this one, so what I'm gonna do, let's kind of erase, I'm gonna erase this just so that I have some space and I don't have to redo the formulas again. So what I have to do is I have to get to, from Kelvin, so while well, Kelvin I can see right here, now I wanna to get to Fahrenheit all the way over here. So I have to first convert it back into degrees Celsius, right? So I can do that, okay, within here. Or, okay, I can do exactly what I did before, which is equate the two sides. And then I'm gonna have a relationship between TK and TF, right? So that's up to you how you actually do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna, instead of, cause I already did that over here where I equated the two sides, now I'm going in reverse. So what I will do is I'm gonna just find out my temperature in degrees Celsius. So from 375 minus 273, right? So this is what I'm gonna have. This is 102. So that would have been degrees Celsius, right? So this is what I have there. And now substituting this into here, I can solve then for TF. So 102 is equal to five over nine and then I can find out my TF. So again, so multiplying both sides by nine over five, that's gonna get rid of this, that's gone, right? So this is what I have there. And then I have to shift this negative 32 over. So it's gonna be nine over five times my degrees Celsius plus 32, okay, equals my temperature in Fahrenheit. So what would that be? Let's see if you would be working this out. So nine over five. So nine divided by five times, this was answer times 102. And then my answer plus 32. And this is about 215.6. And again, if you're rounding this out for yourself, this had three sig figs. So let's do that maybe. So 216. All right. And there you have it, okay? So it's quite a lot of different conversions back and forth, starting from two set of formulas that you had. So as a student, you should be able to do all of these conversions, okay? As long as you um, are given, you know, from which unit of temperature you're going from and converting it into which one do you want. All right, so thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.